I will uh, tell you right now, <clears throat> the key to not fainting is go ahead and lay down. Abby was very upset at the nurses. Yeah, that's, that's what you do immediately. I've never fainted either, but I've been in those situations where it's like, eh, body's saying something isn't right here. Um, I had a nurse one time who was interning, and like she was doing all like the regular stuff and telling me how nervous she was to do vitals. And then she's the one that had to take blood. So I was completely confident in her abilities at that point. Yeah, fun day. Um, yeah, lay down just a minute and you'll be fine. I woke up from a shoulder surgery one time, and they had just, just woken me like I was just coming to. And there was a pregnant nurse saying, should I get a wheelchair? I don't know if I can like, get you up. No, you cannot get me up. Uh, bring a wheelchair. It's fine. I'm sure that's policy anyway. Uh, so do that. It's always fun when you get in weird circumstances where they should have, they should have laid you back. Um, I forgot two things. Uh, number one, Ethan McCartney was baptized last Sunday, and we're going to rejoice with him, are we not? He's not here, but he will be, I think he'll be here second service. Uh, and also, we have got some cans over here. Uh, these are going toward, it. fill those up with, uh, I know it looks like slots for change. Only $100 bills is what we need in there. If you can find a $500 bill, that's fine too. Those do exist. Um, but all of those are going towards our building uh, as, we, as we plan for that. So uh, we're still looking for land, planning on uh, building a building here. Uh, in Mont Bellevue, and so grab one of those, take those home, grab two, you know, if you got a lot of hundred dollar bills at the, at the house, uh, go ahead and do that uh, and fill those up. I'm excited uh, for everything. I know probably, you know, some of you are thinking, man, this isn't moving fast enough, and I'm one of them, but it's just the, the nature of our circumstance, but I'm so excited to be here and to be a part of this church and to see all the, the things that are going on and um, I've lived long enough now to know that, that God is working even when we're like, when is this going to happen? Won't you go ahead and tell me right now? And I would prefer to know right now. But we'll get to a point where we look back and we go, no, that was the right time. And so I'm excited to be here. And I, I know uh, um, uh, Katie and I, when we moved here, we, we joined a bunch of groups here in town, you know, Facebook groups and stuff like that. A lot of people are upset as the, the city grows and everything. People are moving and things like that. And so from an outsider's perspective, I'm also excited about the growth, the people coming here. Uh, that when I talk about being ready for all the people to, to be here, I'm excited about that. And I hope you are too. And I hope they find a church that's ready, that's, that's looking forward to uh, more people coming in and more people joining uh, with us to, to serve this community and all the communities we represent. I'm excited about all of those. I don't want to uh, just only say Mont Bellevue because uh, the Lord has blessed us with people from, from everywhere, right? Uh, so uh, I'm just excited to be here. Today, uh, what I wanted to do was kind of do a part two from last week. So if you're keeping up, this is the non-series issue number four. Uh, last week, we talked about different scriptures from 1 John where uh, the two lessons before, we had talked about boasting in God or having confidence before God about our salvation. Again, not because of who we are or what we have done, but because of who he is and what he has done for us. You see, there's a, a big distinction there. One is self-righteousness. Look at me, God, you owe me. The other is I am where I am because of God. And that's it. And that's a whole different attitude that's a whole different heart within us. Well, last week, uh, I threw you a little curveball because you might have felt like the rug was taken out from under you because the first two weeks, a lot of you were like, hey, I've never known that I can have confidence in salvation. I've never known that I could boast or, or feel like I am saved. Like we, we always needed to correct people that felt that way. Now, you can't really believe that. And so uh, a sad thing for us is we kind of preached and taught like God was, like we were just planning on, hopefully, we got the timing right. That right before we died, we confessed our last sin, and then we died. And so our vision of God was not one of loving father, but a very legalistic judge. Well, no, I don't know his heart. 
did he confess that last sin? And so, so our, our, our vision even of God is kind of, of warped in that way. But last week we looked at 1 John where we read a bunch of verses where in one moment John is talking about how you know you can be saved. And then the next moment he's talking about something where we all think, oh, no, I can't be saved. What do you mean people who continue to sin, you know, are of the devil? That kind of thing. And so we explain some of that. And what I wanted to do this week was kind of just fill out that picture a little better. I had one person, and maybe, maybe you were with this person um, last week that said, okay, now I'm even more confused. <laughs> like, hey, I get it. I understand completely. And that was the point is, is sometimes when we come to Scripture, we can look at it and we read. A lot of times we just read very uh, kind of surface level, kind of I want to read it literally and I just want to apply it immediately. And so we don't really know what to do when we come to a, a book like this where, again, one moment it's, it's here and another minute it's here and you're going, what do I do with this? And so in those moments it takes a deeper study. And so that's what, uh, that's what we did last week and that's what we're going to continue uh, today. So hopefully after today you'll, you'll see the bigger picture of what the writer John here was doing and, and why he was saying some of the things he was saying. And hopefully uh, for some of you who were more confused last week, you walk out of here with a confidence again uh, in your salvation, again, because of what God has done for you in sending Jesus to die for all of us and all the things we've done wrong. And for that, I know we are grateful. Today, uh, we start here in 1 John 3. This is kind of where we, we ended last week uh, because it, it, is, it is one of the most troublesome uh, passages in 1 John, but it's also, I think, the key to opening up this thing. Uh, 1 John 3, verse 4, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Okay? Remember that right here, John is talking about that, that whole thing where we're going, oh man, I'm not sinless, and I know that. I know that about myself. I know my struggles. And so when I read this, I immediately think, okay, I'm not good enough. And guess what? We'll, we'll never be good enough. Because Jesus was good enough for all of us, okay? And his blood, his perfect blood, cleanses all of us, okay? So keep that in mind as we read this. But again, the key here is sin is lawlessness. And the, the thing I think John is talking about is, is not a, hey, I stumble on my Christian walk. It is choosing to walk away from Jesus, to not walk anymore, or to live my own life, or to have my own uh, I don't know, views, or I'm just not going to see this as sin. I'm, not, I'm never going to confess it, obviously. I live in lawlessness. And that's what John is talking about. He's not talking about just a, uh, just a sin every once in a while because, again, he says in the same book, he says, you know, if you sin, we have an advocate before the Father, Jesus Christ, his Son. So when we sin, he says that, Jesus stands before us and God saying, I've got this. I came and I died for these people. He's an advocate for, uh, to the Father on our behalf. And, and so when we come to this, this is what John is talking about. Not a, a stumble, not a, oh man, it got me again. I'm, I'm going to confess that. I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back up and I'm going to continue walking forward. It is that time where we say, you know what? I'm out. I don't care anymore. It doesn't bother me. And I'm going to do my own thing. And so that's what he's talking about. In verse 5, he says, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. That's one of those verses right there. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. And that's where we go, uh-oh, right? Because we all raise our hands. Any sinners in here? We raise our hands, right? Y'all didn't leave me hanging on that one at least, right? We're sinners. We know that about ourselves. And so what he's talking about here, who continues to sin, like, I don't care anymore. That's what he's talking about, I believe. That doesn't bother me. Let's just go about it. Think about that thing that you struggle with in your life. What John is talking about here is, is not that you continue to struggle with it. It's that you've decided, all right, I'm good with it now. I'm just going to embrace it. Okay? Imagine that in your mind. That's what he's talking about. That now I'm going to embrace that thing. Uh, again, no, no confession necessary. That's what he's talking about. All right, dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning 
from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who, do, who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Now, I want you to mark that in just a second in your mind. How he throws that in here. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Why are these two separate things here? It's like you've got a, a command, and then you've got like an application of it. Like you follow God's commands, oh, and who do not love their brother and sister. Those same people uh, are these people that I'm talking about here. Keep that in your mind. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he mur murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Okay, Here, here's one of those, those, those testing scriptures, okay? All right, is this me? Is this where I am right now? We know, I know in my life, I have passed from death, being lost, to life, being found in Jesus Christ, because, what is it, church? You think that's a suggestion? Just a if you feel like it type of thing? Do you love the people around you? Do you love your family? Do you love your friends? Uh-oh. Do you love the people that you don't agree with? Shall we say, do you love people of the other political party that's not of your own? Anybody want to confess right now? Go ahead and have a time of confession. Like this is a test. This is serious stuff, right? We, we come to Scripture and we say, oh, I believe in Scripture. All right, here's one of those tests. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Any questions about that? Anyone who does not love remains in death. Man, anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has et eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what, what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with action and in truth. Remember in James, uh, James will say, uh, how can you say, you know, somebody comes to your door and they're in need? How can you say, you know, go uh, be, what is it, be warmed and fed? Be, uh, you know, it's kind of like, hey, go away. I'll be praying for you. I have the opportunity to serve you right now, but I'd rather you just go away. And, and really what, what John is saying here is, is that's all talk, right? Like we can come together and we can talk about a lot of good things. Francis Chan uh, kind of calls it the, the holy huddle. He says we're like a football team a lot of times where we come together, we huddle up and we talk about the play and how good the play will be and we all agree that we should run that play and then we break the huddle and we never run the play. That's the way our churches are a lot of times, aren't they? If we just come and all we do is speak and we talk about how, yeah, we should do this and this would be great and man, we would look like Jesus if we just did this. And we're all in agreement. We've got unity in that. And then we walk away doing nothing. That's, that's not helpful to anyone, is it? That's not helpful to us. That's not helpful for the person in need. That is not truly showing love for our brothers and sisters. And so what John is getting at right here is there are lost people out here that are choosing to walk away from Jesus. Uh, there are even people claiming Jesus who are not out here loving they're brothers and sisters. And he says, again, he says, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with action and in truth. Go do something. That's a little more difficult, isn't it? I know some of you in here, um, so, some of us, it, it can be easy to, even when we're praying for someone, to say, I'm going to pray for you, and then we forget. 
Anybody else pretty forgetful? Like, i got to have my calendar, and if it's not on my calendar or written down somewhere, it is gone a lot of times. Um, I went to see uh, Lexi and Mikey sing in the choir this week. Um, and, and last week I bought tickets from Lexi, and I had $15, and I needed $20. And she said, you can pay me later. I said, I will think about it about three months from now if I don't do it right now. And she <laughs> She ended up paying for us. We had to pay her back. So I didn't forget that time. But that's kind of how I am. But I need, I need to have that action. I need to have something that's tying me to it instead of just saying it, saying I will do it. Because that's not helpful. And then a lot of times, when you, even when we're praying for people, we can be forgetful. I know some of you in here who are people who will not say I'm praying for you unless I've already said that prayer. That's a fantastic thing. But apparently John is dealing with some people here who are all talk. You guys want to be part of a church that's just all talk? Like we agree with the talk, but it's just all talk. We don't actually do anything. I've talked about being authentic, being a person who wants to just kind of put it out there. I don't want to hide anything from you guys. You know, not everything's appropriate to share in a group like this. But I don't care to be a person who has to put on a mask and go about church. That uh, people are out here in the world wanting to be a part of something special. But it's got to be real. It's got to be authentic. And that's exactly what John is saying here. Let us do this. Let us show this love. Not with just talk. But with actions and in truth. What John is saying here uh, as well. Well, let's just, let's just continue here. Uh, in, in chapter 4, 1 John 4, he says this, starting in verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world, okay? Uh, what he's saying there, and, and I just want to set you up for the, the rest of what he's saying here, is people are claiming to have the spirit. And guess what? He's saying, you know, there, there's some other spirits out there. Not all of them are the Holy Spirit. So there are ways to see this. There are false prophets that have gone on in the world. Do y'all know there are people out here preaching things that just aren't right? Do y'all know that? It just you can't, you can't find it. Now, we can, we can do the same thing here. We've got to be careful, careful right? We want to be careful uh, readers and studiers of the Word of God. But he's saying you've got to test the things that come to you. Like I told you several weeks ago, I hope that what you hear from me, you go and test, you go and try to find and, and study and search. That's what I want from you. There are many false prophets who have gone out in the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. And Antichrist uh, language is kind of, it's been used as like an end time thing for the longest, right? You may have heard that the Antichrist is coming. He's, and John's saying here, yeah, there are already Antichrists in the world. People who are denying uh, that Jesus even came in the flesh. But what John is saying here is you've got to look for Jesus people. Okay? Do, do the people you're seeing who are claiming to have the spirit do they reflect who Jesus Christ is? Do we reflect who Jesus Christ is? Because what he's, what he's saying here is you've got to look at their life. What are they showing? That's why it's so important when we pray to be salt and light, to be examples out in our community, because if we're claiming from G, to be from Jesus, to be Jesus' people, and we're walking out here just living in sin, we're, we've chosen to walk the way of lawlessness, what kind of example is that for Jesus? Right? He says, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. You heard that before? God is love. Right? Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is is love. I'm claiming to be from God. I'm claiming to be an example of who God is, showing the world, and I don't love people? Don't let someone like that come and tell you about who Jesus is. 
So just look at your own life for a minute. Don't claim to be a Jesus person and, and be just a, you know, old grumpy person who doesn't love anybody. <laughs> I'm thinking just some uh, old uh, country, uh, what, do you, what do you say, phrases that come to mind for that. Um, I don't even know if I should share those. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to think right now. My mom's from Tennessee, and so I've got Arkansas, Tennessee, and now Texas things to kind of blend in here. Um, but he's just saying, look at their lives. We will get to this, and we'll have a series uh, this year on uh, elders. Uh, we'll probably cover deacons as well, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, but in the same section that he talks about elders and deacons, the, the whole point is not a legalistic like checklist. It's look at their life. What kind of person are they? Don't be blind to who they are. Don't, don't be a person who's just, yeah, bless his heart. Look at his life. Is, is he a Jesus person? Is she a Jesus person? This is how you know if this is a person from Jesus. That they have the Holy Spirit as they live like Jesus does. Because God is love, they're going to be loving people. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. All right, church. I need you to respond right now. What does God want us to do? Love. And I know I've heard a lot of church people say, I don't need another sermon on love. <laughs> That's what John's dealing with here. When he's talking about the in and out, one minute you say, oh, man, you be in. There's confidence in, in your salvation. The other minute it's like wait, people keep on sinning. They're living outside. <clears throat> All right, we'll look at the people who aren't actually loving people. Look at the people who are just talk. They don't actually put it into action. Oh, yeah, it'd be great too, but I don't ever live this way. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Again, I don't want you to hear, I've got to live a perfect, sinless life, and I know that I already don't do that, and I have my struggles. I don't want you to see Oh, well, Jesus, perfection, I can't do it. Jesus came and died for you because you can't do it. And his blood covers you because you can't do it. God lavishes his grace on us knowing that we have shortcoming. We have failing. But you can have confidence because I, I want to live a life like Jesus. I want to live this life that, that moves closer and closer to Jesus Christ. From uh, last week, we, uh, I think we talked about this. Maybe we didn't. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. This is how we know whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Be Jesus, people. Be Jesus, people, wherever we go. Okay? Any questions about that? I feel like we should have like a Bible discussion over there. Maybe we'll do this Wednesday night. We'll just say, hey, bring your questions. That we need to be Jesus' people. Again, this, this requires some self-reflection, doesn't it? Am I in right standing with God? Am I you know, being the example I need to be? Am I showing the love I need to show? Or is something else coming out of me? Is something else that doesn't look 
like Jesus coming out of this person right here? And that's a difficult question for us, especially when we kind of know, yeah, I hadn't been living the right kind of life. There have been some things coming out that shouldn't be, things I need to clean up. Live as Jesus did. Treat people the way Jesus treated people. It's, it's interesting because uh, when I say that, I immediately think of like the last year or two. All of a sudden, everyone wants to claim the Jesus that flipped tables. I wrote a little article that, that was like table flipping Jesus. Because in some people's minds, that's all Jesus ever went around doing was flipping tables. Like Jesus was just somebody like uh, the Hulk. You know, one, one minute he's, he's Bruce Banner, and the next, thing, next minute he's, he's all green and big and swollen, and he's flipping tables. Jesus did that in a, in a very specific, for a very specific reason. But look at how he treated everyone. Yes, there were thieves in the temple at that moment, so there was an issue. But Jesus went around even loving the people that everyone else said, you know what, if he really was the son of God, he would know that girl. Uh -uh, you should be around her. But yet he showed the love and compassion and care for that kind of person. And we have to live as Jesus did. We love because he first loved us. Love, loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. I'm going to read that again so you get it. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. We might need to write that down. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. We just need to sit with that just a minute. Whoever does not love their brother or sister who they've looked in the eye, who you've sat on the pew with, who you've passed in the grocery store, who you've seen on TV maybe, those people who you can see, touch, you can be around, you can have interaction with, if you can't love those people, how in the world could you love God who you have not seen? The scripture here calls you a liar. It says, and he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love God. They're brothers and sister. Keep in mind this whole book. John is going back and forth with an, with an issue. He's writing to church people, trying to tell them about this is how you identify good people, bad people. And how many times have we read you better love your brother and sister so far? Over and over and over, right? You need to love your brother and sister. Quit talking about it. Do it. Quit acting like you know, oh, yeah, I got to do that. Because our, our picture of God sometimes is, is just like a, a legalist. Anybody know what, like, what a legalist is? Like I see everything as a rule or a law, and there's no like substance to it. It is yes or no, in or out, did you do it? And sometimes we look at Scripture and we say, oh, man, I have kept all of these commands. I have not done what I wasn't supposed to do. I have done what I was supposed to do, and then the application is just kind of lost on us. Well, what about loving people to the point where you actually do something? What about looking at yourself in the mirror saying, am I a Jesus person? Do I actually love people? Do I love my brother and sister? Or is really what I'm saying just talk? And again, that's difficult. But I don't think you read about a, a legalistic God in Scripture. We read about a God who cares for us and loves us and wants us to, to join him, but also gives us the option of walking away. Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. Okay, do you, do you get kind of the, the both feeling there uh, by Loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's why we will ask, uh, and Heath asked Ethan last week as he was uh, preparing to be baptized, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? That great confession. How many of you in here right now can we confess as a church 
that we believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Raise your hand, please. Well, then that means all of this that we have read today is to us. Because I claim to be from Jesus. I claim Jesus is the Son of God. I mean, we're, we're just calling God a liar. We're just, you know, saying what God says is not important if we just believe that and walk away. And we just, oh, yeah, 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 I believe it. And it really doesn't have any substance in our life. It says, who is it that overcomes the world? It is those who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's a good thing to celebrate. That we've got a room full of people here that said that right now this morning. But it's got to mean something. And this is the testimony. I, t I promise I'm almost done. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Do you have Jesus in your life? It's pretty, pretty plain this morning, isn't it? If you do, you have life. If you do not, you do not. And I remember from last week, I, I said this, that, that feeling that a lot of us have, that a lot of us were raised with, that feeling of anxiety or insecurity or I'm not good enough or I'll never make it, that feeling that, that makes you feel anxious about your salvation is the same feeling that should assure you of your salvation because you care. Because at that moment, you know, I have not walked away. That I still have it in my heart that I want, to, I want to do this and I want to walk alongside God. Yeah, I know I mess up. I know I sin. I know I fall short. Yeah. But I care. And I want to get up and I want him to, to keep giving me grace and mercy because I need it. And because I have claimed Jesus Christ as Lord of my life, I live in a certain way, don't I? I live as a person, a Jesus person in the world who I love people. Is it always easy? Absolutely not. I think I told you before, I, I, I used to say I can get along with anyone, especially with uh, like job interviews. I'd say I get along with anyone. And then I worked with a lady who changed my mind. And I said, and then now I say, I can get along with anyone who wants to be gotten along with. Because she didn't want to be getting along with. She just preferred that let's go ahead and be enemies. Because she liked that, I don't know. But we still got to be Jesus people in the world. You think Jesus walked alongside those people too? <laughs> yeah. And I imagine he thought, mm-mm. Probably said, bless her heart. He's probably a southerner, don't you think? but we walk as Jesus' people. John says throughout this book, he gives us assurance, I promise, I hope some of you read it this week, that yeah, you see the back and forth, but John is here to assure you that if you're walking as Jesus walked, if you're walking trying to live the life that Jesus has, has modeled for you, you live as a person who has received the Holy Spirit to convict you of those things, you, you feel bad about it, you want to change your life, that you can't have assurance, you can't have confidence in your salvation. And walk out of here today knowing that. I hope that's the case. If we can do anything for you, we're going to offer an invitation song. Uh, we'd love to pray with you. Would you come as we stand and sing?